Tonight, we are going to attempt to transmit audio over a laser beam. Ooh. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds like a real high-tech involved project. It's not. Um, if you were going to try this at home, what you're going to need is an MP3 player, a radio, anything with a headphone jack output will work. You'll need a laser pointer. Now, we're going to hack ours. You kind of need to get in and yeah, mess with it a little. So if it's your favorite $30 laser pointer, you might want to run down to the dollar store and get a cheapie. You'll need some batteries or a power supply, a couple of power supply wall warts. We're going to use our nifty homemade power supply. It'll be running everything in, that you see in the project today. For the receiver, you need a cadmium sulfide cell. Little guy, two wires. It's a photoresistor. You can hack those out of a lot of stuff. If you don't have one of those, you might have a solar panel laying around, you could use that. We're also going to try an infrared receiver unit that we hacked out of an old ball mouse. These little data wheels that spin around, there's a sender and a receiver, infrared, you know, and that's how it tracks. So we ripped one, out, uh, ripped one of those out of an old ball mouse. Now, I'm assuming you're going to have uh, some jacks, maybe male, female, eighth inch, quarter inch jacks laying around, some wire, alligator clips. But you, this is where you have to go down to Rat Shack. Sorry. It's, you need to bring like $3.20. Uh, part number 273 It's an audio output transformer. Uh, five leads. We're not going to bother with the one. The one side is 8 ohms. The other side is uh, 1,000 1K. The first thing that I need to do is eliminate the batteries in the laser pointer. So what I'm going to try is soldering wires in on the connectors where the batteries would normally hook up. Now after that, I also need to eliminate the on-off switch for this laser. It's going to just run hot. So I have completely removed the switch from the circuit board inside the laser. We disassemble the laser and now here I'm just going to jump her over with some solder on this board between these two connections. Real kind of sloppy job here. But there you go. That should be it. That big blob that's going to do it. And it's weird that you'd think this would be positive, the center, but it's not. It's reverse polarity, I would call it. That's the ground. And there you should be able to see a little bit of laser there. I hope I'm not wrecking the camera too bad. But it looks like, yeah, we got it. It's working. So at this point, I'm going to cut in wires, uh, one on the chassis and one on the spring to run this laser hot. So we went ahead and ran some wires right into the laser pointer to eliminate the batteries. Now it runs off an external power supply. We also uh, soldered a big blob of solder into the switch so it's always going to run hot. As soon as it gets power it comes on. Now you can see I mounted it in this fancy doodah sci-fi housing. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, we got our power supply over here. The negative comes right directly into the laser. The positive side spins through the 1000 ohm side of this transformer and then it comes out runs right up to you guessed it to our fancy schmancy sci-fi laser now the other side of the transformer transformers have two sides two coils and those those uh, the coil the electricity spins through there produces a magnetic field and they kind of rub off each other so it's it's like a, like a little internal connection. It's an impedance buffer. This is 8 ohm. So we're coming out of here 8 ohm out of our Walkman into the 8 ohm side. So we just plug that right in there. The field creates over there and then it gets buffered over here and comes out 1000 ohm into the laser. So basically we're impregnating this laser with the audio signal from the CD via this transformer. And the power supply is giving us the juice. So that's our sending unit. It's pretty basic stuff. Now a laser shoots over here, bumps into our buddy the CDS cell. That's a cadmium sulfide cell. Basically it's a photoresistor. It's just like your volume knob on your TV except there's no knob. So how this works is uh, it changes the resistance based on how much light, or in this case shadow, is going to be hitting on the, the surface of the cell. Uh, 
And in this application, you know, it's a receiver. The laser's hitting it real hot, and uh, it's impregnated with that audio signal. So what we did, we connected this to an amplifier. But uh, it needed a little power to juice it up, so we cut in 5 volts. So basically, you think, you know, your 5 volts is coming in here. Here's your CDS cell, and the amp is going over here. Pretty basic connection, you know six leads hooked up like that. Now it got goofy when we plugged it into the amplifier. It was kind of quiet so I split it off into two and plugged in another amp and it turned out with all three speakers going it was a little louder for this demonstration. So uh, the only other thing I can tell you is maybe you'd have better luck with a different amplifier. This was a little monkeying around. I thought maybe I had done something wrong and, you know, wasted some time. But it does work. It's loud enough for this test. I mean, this is just kind of a goofy experiment. Now, what I did find is if we dim the lights, it raises the volume considerably. I mean, you have to think it's just kind of a low wattage, not a real bright laser. I mean, you can't see it unless you were to blow smoke on it. So... For this next test, we're going to dim the lights, and then you'll be able to hear it a little bit. And I'll actually, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring the light up a little bit. You can hear the volume change. So here we go. I'm going to hit the power supply, and hopefully we'll hear some music. There we go. Uh, I don't know if you can see the laser beam connecting with our CVS cell over here and enjoy the soothing sounds. I will raise the lights a little bit. Check this out. Loads of fun, Beach Baby. Uh, there you have it, folks. Transmitting audio over a laser. Completely useless, unbelievable waste of time, but a frightening display of silly technology. Two trips to Radio Shack. The first Rat Shack I went to, I give the guy the paper with the part number. He goes, oh, I'm going to check if we even have this thing. Well, I'm on, way, I'm on my way to the back to grab it. So he types it in. He goes, no, we don't got it. He gave me the paperback. He was so happy they didn't have it. So I said, well, you know, would you mind checking to see on your computer, you know, if they have it at the other store? Because there's three of them in our area. So he made a face and got all mad. And then he goes, oh, yeah, well, they have two of them in Willowbrook. So I go to the Willowbrook store. These two guys are hunched over a cell phone playing Snake 3 or something on it. And... Uh, May I help you, sir? And so I said, yeah, I need this transformer. The guy makes this sour, unbelievable, <laughs> sour puss face. So I'm like, all right, and, you know, I'm walking to the back to get it. And he goes, huh, I got to see if we even have this thing. And so he goes over, <laughs> and I go, you got two of them, you know. And so he's still, <laughs> so then he goes, hey, Jake, do you don't even know where this thing is, you know. So it was a whole horrible thing. I had to go get it. Two radio shacks. And you know what? I got my receipt and I'm taking it back. Hacking with Petey, bitches. Rat shack. Don't do it.